Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new Phoenix Point APU powered mini PC from Morphine known as the M600. Now personally, I think that they should have called this the M700 because it is powered by a new 7000 series Phoenix Point APU. In fact, it's actually the most powerful APU on the market right now, the Ryzen 9 7940HS. So of course, we've got a pretty powerful little system here from Morphine, 8 Zen 4 cores, 16 threads, and RDNA 3 graphics. I got a great feeling that we're going to see some amazing performance out of this small form factor PC, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. Now, I've actually been using this site for a long time now. They do offer PC games from Steam, Uplay, Ubisoft. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use the site is for their Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. These are activation keys that you can pick up really cheap. And right now at checkout, if you use code ETA, you can get 30% off. And this 30% discount will be going on until the end of August. So with this discount, you can pick one of these Windows 10 Pro activation keys up for $15.58. And don't forget, you can use PayPal to check out on their website. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. I've always been a big fan of the Morphine design. It's actually very sleek here, very minimalistic, and a couple months ago they did release a couple other mini PCs that they also called the M600, but those were powered by Ryzen 6000. Since we've got a Ryzen 7000 series APU here, I think they should have went with M700. But either way, we are working with much more power here. And inside of the box, we get a vase amount. This also supports a 2.5 inch drive. So we get some hardware for that and said vase amount. Plus we get our cabling, power and data, a 120 watt power supply and a six foot HDMI cable. The included power supply does use a barrel jack, but remember you can actually power this from the front USB 4 port if you've got a 100 watt PD charger, so keep that in mind. And this actually means if you've got a monitor that supports 100 watt PD charging, you could use this in single cable operation mode from that USB 4 up front, so you could power the unit and send video signal directly over that. But for my testing, I will be using the included power supply plugged into the barrel jack around back. All of the Morphine mini PCs I've taken a look at on the channel have been constructed of metal. This one's no different. And on each side, we do have a lot of ventilation, but not much else going on here. But as soon as we take a look at the front, we've got one USB 4 port, and this does utilize 40 gig protocol. Plus, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports here. And moving around back, we've got our power input, three full-size USB 2.0 ports, another USB 3.2 port, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, dual gigabit ethernet, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. In all, we can actually do three displays out utilizing the display port, HDMI, and that front USB 4. Now, I definitely wanted to give you a look at the internals, and like I mentioned, this does support one 2.5 inch drive up to seven millimeters. We can put it right in the lid here, and it's easy to get into the top section, just two screws on the back. And from here, we can access our RAM. This is using dual channel DDR5, We've also got access to our Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module and our NVMe SSD. Now that's not all because we can get into the bottom of this unit with four screws. It's actually pretty simple to do. And once we get down here, we've got another M.2 NVMe slot plus this huge blower style fan. So they actually utilize this larger fan so it doesn't have to spin up so fast to move a lot of air over the cooler here. So it's actually nice and quiet. And of course, you could get into the BIOS and max it out to 100% if you want. We'll make a little bit of noise. But under everyday normal use, it's really not that bad. Now, when it comes to the overall specs, they opted to use the AMD Ryzen 9 7948HS. We've got 8 Zen 4 cores and 16 threads, a base clock of 4 GHz, and a boost up to 5.2. This is definitely one of my favorite mobile APUs that's ever been created. The CPU performance here is absolutely outstanding, but it can draw some wattage. So luckily, they did include that 120 watt power supply, which is more than enough for this unit. With that new Phoenix Point APU, we get the Radeon 780Mi GPU, 12 compute units, up to 2800 megahertz, and of course, this is based on RDNA 3. 
This unit has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running in dual channel at 5600 megahertz. We can add up to two PCIe 4.0 NVMEs. We also have that single 2.5 inch drive up to seven millimeters. It's got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and we're running Windows 11 Pro right now. Okay, so I've been able to spend a little time with this machine and overall we've got a really fast system given that we have that 7940HS. And the TDP here is actually set at 65 watts out of the box, which is great for the 7940, but there is a little more that we can pull out of this machine. And again, I did want to show you that we do have that 5600 megahertz RAM, which makes a difference going up from 48 to 56. There are some machines that have been released recently that only support 4800. 56 is definitely the way to go. And obviously this came with 5600 megahertz RAM. And one last thing here, I did dedicate eight gigabytes of VRAM here to the iGPU. You can leave it at auto if you want to, but since we've got 32 gigs total in this machine, I figured we'd just go with eight here so we didn't have to worry about it. I'll give you a quick look here, live TDP with hardware info from CPU-Z. You can see this jumps right up to 65 watts and it'll stay there indefinitely. Now I have seen this thing hit around 90 degrees Celsius, even with that large cooler we took a look at, but 95 is kind of thermal limit there. And uh, at 95, it'll start lowering that TDP, but it really does kind of push through. And just using something like this as an everyday PC is going to work out just fine. And speaking of fine, we'll head over to more fines website. I'm using the built-in Wi-Fi 6 here, M600. And keep in mind, they do offer a few different M600 models from the 6850H all the way up to what we have here with that Ryzen 9 7940HS. So if you're in the market for the most powerful one they offer right now, this is definitely the one to get. Web browsing, really snappy here. Another thing I wanted to take a look at was some 4K video playback. And from here, we'll just find something. 4K, 60fps, HDR, full screen it, make sure we're at 4K, and we'll turn Stats for Nerds on. The 7940HS has more than enough power to do 4K video playback. We could even do three streams 4K60 on this machine with no stutters. As long as you've got a good internet connection, you should be good to go. And with that dual Ethernet, not a problem there. Even Wi-Fi 6E here is really fast. Stats for Nerds up in the top left hand corner, one drop frame so far, and at the end of this we only had a total of two drop frames out of about 5,000 frames. So yeah, we've got a really quick machine here. With these new Phoenix Point APUs, even with the lower end models with six cores, this is all a lot of people are going to need. I mean, it's got more than enough power for uh, photo editing, 4K video playback, web browsing, email checking. And with that 780M iGPU, we can actually get some really good gaming out of the way. But before we move on to that, I did want to give you a look at a few benchmarks that I ran on this machine. With Geekbench 6, we got a single core of 2,626, but most impressively, multi-core coming in at 13,346. Now remember, this is running at a 65 watt TDP, so it is pulling a bit of power. When it comes to 3D Mark Night Raid, we got a 31,205, Fire Strike 7,642, and Time Spy coming in with a 3,179. Very impressive synthetics, but this isn't the highest Time Spy score that I've seen out of the 7940HS. On the last machine that I tested, we actually got a 3,300, but that was running up to around 70 watts with a boost. The first game I wanted to show off was CSGO. We're at 1080p high and I got an average 185 FPS. This chip will run CSGO at 1440p high over 60. We can get an average of around 82. It's pretty impressive to be able to run a game at 1440p on an iGPU, but then again, it's only CSGO. It's definitely an older one. Next up, Spider-Man Miles Morales. I do have V-Sync on, locked down at 60. We're at 1080p low, and I've said it before, but this game is really hit or miss. I could reboot my system, start this game up, and not get this kind of frame rate at 1080p. Sometimes I have to drop this down to 720. I do not know what the issue is with iGPUs in this game, but it's really a little all over the place. Either way, this is definitely some of the best performance that I've seen out of an iGPU so far, given that we're at 1080p, but we did have to drop it down to low settings. Street Fighter V has already come a long way when it comes to optimization since it's been released. We're at 1080p, medium, running at 60fps. 
These chips are great for fighting games. Mortal Kombat 11, 1080p high will run at 60 FPS, same with Injustice 2 and many of the other fighting games on the market right now, be it 2D or 3D. These chips do a really great job with Cyberpunk 2077. We can get an average of 74 FPS out of this machine, 1080p low settings. Now I've seen a bit more out of the same chip on other systems, but uh, it really comes down to TDP there. And if you take a look in the top left hand corner, this is boosting up to around 78, and that's because we've got a load on the iGPU and CPU at the same time. I know it's an old one, but I still enjoy playing this, especially for the Rally Cross. Project Cars 2, 1080p, medium, over 100 FPS on average. We can lock this at 60 and go to high, except for the shadows. As soon as I take shadows up to high, it kind of falls on its face. We go under 60 there. But personally, I still think it looks great at medium settings, and we didn't have to drop that resolution down from 1080. Here's the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p, lowest settings, and I am using Fidelity Cast set to 80%. At low with this, we were actually under 60, but the lowest settings does net us an average of 72 FPS with this game. This has been one of those that really struggles on iGPUs, but right now I was actually able to take it to 900p original settings and get an average of 68 FPS. At 1080p original settings, you see some dips every once in a while, but we can go down to low if you wanted to. And even at 900p, I think the game looks great and it plays just fine on the 7940HS. So with this machine here, we are working with an AMD HS variant, which out of the box do run at higher wattages. I think their suggested TDP here is 45 watts, but we've got it sitting at 65. So I really wanted to test out total system power consumption with this. And it does pull a lot more than other mini PCs on the market, but that's really because we've got the most powerful APU right now. I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter while doing all of my tests. And at idle in performance mode, we're around 19 watts. Average gaming, this pulls 78 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to draw from the wall was 98 watts. Obviously, a lot more than a 6800U powered device, but again, we are working with much more performance here. Overall, I do like the design of Morphine's M600 PC, whether you go with the 6000 series or the new 7000. It is very minimalistic, nothing too fancy here. We've got a lot of I.O., USB 4 up front. But one thing I'd love to see with these more fine mini PCs is a better cooling system. As you saw while gaming on this at 65 watts with that 7940HS, we did hit 90 degrees Celsius, which isn't thermal throttle. Thermal throttle would be 95, and it doesn't get too loud. From the BIOS, we can actually get in there and fully adjust the fan curve on it. But even at full boat, we can still get pretty hot at those higher wattages. There's more than enough room inside of this machine to add a much larger cooler, or maybe even just adding two more heat pipes to the cooler they have would definitely help out. But other than that, I mean, it's a great performer, as you saw. We've got the most powerful Phoenix Point APU and the best integrated graphics that we've seen out of any chip that AMD's ever released. So if you're looking for a high-performance mini PC, then this is definitely one to keep an eye on. Now, if you're interested in seeing anything else run on this, different operating system, more games, emulation, definitely let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links to Morphine's website in the description. And remember, they're offering 6000 and 7000 when it comes to the M600, so definitely be mindful when you're shopping around. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.